Hello, kids. Welcome back. This Sunday, we are continuing with our Heroes vs. Villains sermon series. Last Sunday, we learned about the story of Moses vs. the Pharaoh, how God will give us courage to do what is right. Today, we are going to learn about another hero and villain from the Bible. Imagine having a rare, special coin that someone gave you. You treasure that coin and are excited to tell everyone about it. However, just when you tell the story about the coin and show it off, someone else claims they have the real coin and yours is just a fake copy. Now, instead of proudly sharing what you have, you must defend it and prove that it is what you say it is. You find the proof that your coin is in fact the real deal, but now people doubt its worth. How could someone convince others that they had the rare coin when you had never given them reason to doubt you? You shouldn't have to prove you're telling the truth. Do you walk away knowing that you have the information to show that you're correct? Or do you present your information and show the other coin is a fake? Most likely, you will do whatever it takes to show you are telling the truth. Just like our Bible hero, Elijah. When he went up against the 450 prophets of the idol bell, let's see what happened. There is only one true God. And that is our God. A long, long time ago in the Bible times, there was a man named Elijah. And Elijah was a prophet of God. He was the last prophet of God. God's people, the Israelites. Come yes, on, the very go. same people that God had saved from Egypt. Even though God had done so much for them, they still turned away from him. The wicked king Ahab and queen Jezebel had convinced them all to worship a false god named Baal. God was very sad that his people had forgotten him, and he decided to use his prophet Elijah to remind them all who the one true God of Israel was. So here is what happened. Elijah had a contest with the prophets of Baal. He was the only prophet of God, and there were like, hundreds of prophets of Baal. So here's what we're going to do. We are both going to set up an altar and place a sacrifice on it. Instead of lighting the fire by ourselves, we will ask our God to light the fire. And whoever's God answers with fire will be the one true God. All right, let's do it. We will show you and you will see. <laughs> Cool! Why don't you guys go first? So, the prophets of Baal began to pray to Baal. But no matter how hard they tried, nothing happened. Mighty Baal! Mighty Baal! Please, Mighty Baal! Mighty Baal! Mighty Baal! Mighty Baal! Come on already! Shout louder! Maybe your god is sleeping. Maybe your god has gone shopping or something. The prophets of Baal were annoyed, and they went as far as they can to hurt themselves to make the fake god Baal listen to their request. And still, nothing happened. There was no response. All they heard was silence. Because Baal was not real. He is just a false god that they believed in. Ha! I see you guys got nothing. All right, all right, let's gather on me. It's my turn now. So here is my altar. <sighs> let's make this a little more challenging. I want you to pour a lot of water on the altar so much that it would not be able to light a fire. We wouldn't want to make this too easy now, would we? All right, step back everyone. Step back and watch. Almighty God, please show us that you are the one true God. The fire of the Lord came down. It burned up the sacrifice. It burned up the wood and the stones and the soil. It even dried up the water in the ditch. All the people saw it. Then they fell down flat with their faces toward the ground. 
They cried out to the one true God. The Lord is the one and only God. The Lord is the one and only God. The Lord is the one and only God. Ahab was a wicked king and was married to a wicked queen named Jezebel. They did not worship God and led the people to worship false gods. Elijah was the only prophet of God, but there were over 450 prophets of Baal. Elijah told them to prepare a sacrifice and place it on an altar, as he did the same. They would each call to their God, and the one true God would set fire to the sacrifice and altar. Elijah allowed the prophet of Baal to go first. They prepared the altar and the sacrifice. Then they cried out to Baal from morning until noon. They began to cut themselves, begging their God to answer them. Baal, of course, had no answer because it wasn't real. At the evening time, Elijah rebuilt the altar, using 12 stones to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. He built a trench around it and had water poured on the wood and stones. They poured so much water on the altar that the trench around it was filled. Fire and water don't mix. Elijah wanted to make sure everyone would know that it was a miracle when God set fire from heaven. Elijah prayed to God that would send fire from heaven to burn the altar and the sacrifice. God immediately answered his prayer and even though it was all drenched with water, everything was burnt. The people praised God and cried out to him when they saw what he had done. Elijah was the only prophet serving God, while there were so many other prophets serving false gods. It would be easy to feel alone and even scared. Some would have considered running away. However, Elijah knew that he wasn't alone. He knew that God was with him, and God alone was greater than all the false prophets in the world. There will be times in our lives where we feel all alone. However, God is the same as He was when Elijah was alive. He will never leave us and will always be there for us. All we have to do is pray. Just like Elijah did, it's comforting to know that God, the creator of the world, is always with us. So kids, let's remember today's message. I can pray to God when I feel alone. Let's close in a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for letting us know that you are always with us. Whenever we feel alone, we just have to pray to you because you are always there to listen to us and be with us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye.